I was starting to feel a little bit backed up. I had some vivid dreams. I didn't really feel bad until today. I do have my fears about Okay, it's day three, right? No, it's day four. <laughs> day four of the lion diet. And so far, it's been going really well. Day one was kind of hard. I felt really tired, but actually I got the chance to nap. We got to take rotating naps on Monday. And so I got to sleep a little more, which was good. There was a point in the afternoon where I really wanted some coffee, but I got to sleep through that. So that was really lucky. So I had bone broth instead of coffee waking up and it was pretty good. I added some electrolyte mix to it. And so I felt like that did give me a little bit of a boost in the morning, just getting those minerals in. And then I had jerky and butter for my first meal. It was probably around 11 or so when I I ate my first meal and then I actually went to a aerial hoop class that evening which was super fun. I've been wanting to try that forever and I'm considering getting one to hang in here because I have just enough room with the stand that I have to use one in here and I think that's something I definitely want to get back into. That's part of the exercise component that I really want more of in my life is that fun kind of circus feel to what I'm doing. So by the time that was over and I got home, I was really hungry, I was ready to eat. So I ate probably around a pound or so of ground beef and I'd actually cooked this before we went to the class. So I let it sit out and let that tallow, I used all the tallow that came out of the beef when it cooked and let that all sit in a little container. And so it was like the mashed potato, the perfect, room temperature tallow that I really like. And so I just use a fork and, you know, hit a piece of beef and then scoop up all that delicious fat. And so I ate all of the beef and I think I only left like maybe a tablespoon of the tallow. Day two was pretty much a repeat of day one. I had some bone broth left over in my cup from the day before. So I just heated that up in the microwave and drank that as my coffee replacement. And I had the same jerky and butter for my first meal right around the same time. And then I actually had some Wagyu that Ben brought home from work for dinner that, that night. And I actually put some butter on the side, but it was so rich. It was almost like pure fat. It was almost white, this little brick. Like it was so fatty and rich. It was unbelievable. So I ate, I couldn't even eat the whole thing because it was so rich, but I ate almost that full plate that you see here. And then only like one of those pieces of butter. Cause I was full after that. And then I did have some jerky as a snack later that night. Cause I was feeling snacky. And I think that's part of kind of adjusting to this no coffee thing to your appetite changes, right? Because coffee is an appetite suppressant, caffeine's an appetite suppressant. And so even though I've been drinking little to no caffeine over the last month, like the month of December, trying to lead into this, so I would be ready to give up the coffee a little bit easier, it still has affected my hunger signals. And I think that's really interesting. And I'm glad I'm doing this experiment. Even if I choose to add coffee back in at the end of the 31 days, I will know more now about how that affects my cravings, how it affects how hungry I am, because I think it can mask some of the true hunger signals. Okay, so I did feel on day three yesterday, like I was starting to feel a little bit backed up. Like I felt like I had to go to the bathroom. I tried a few times, but I couldn't make anything happen until last night, kind of just like, went in there and made it happen. But according to the Bristol chart, I am not constipated. It was just more of like hard to pass stool versus what I've been used to. But I think again, the coffee, taking the coffee away has an impact on this because I know that even switching to decaf 
that changed my bowel movements. It made them less frequent for a little while and they were just harder to pass until my body adjusted to that. And so I kind of expected this to happen. I wasn't expecting to just have no changes. That feels pretty normal to me. And today I'm actually feeling a lot better. So I'll keep you up to date on the uh, poop department as we go through the month. Yesterday I was also really tired. I felt like I really wanted that afternoon pick me up. Yesterday it was like a struggle to get through the day. But today on day four, I'm feeling quite a bit better. I feel like a little bit more natural energy is coming out. Like I can sit here and talk to you guys today and feel pretty good, feel like I have decent energy. And I'm hoping that that will continue to increase because my goal for this experiment is to number one, see if I can clear out my skin. I do have that patch of psoriasis left. I want to start putting on some muscle again, which is why I went and tested out that that circus class because I thought, ooh, this would be a fun way for me to get back into fitness and in a way that's fun and enjoyable that I'm going to want to do and do some extra stretching for that and stuff. And so that's right down my alley. And I was so incredibly sore um, on the second and third that, I mean, yesterday I could barely lift my arms. Like my lats were like done for. It's so much upper body and core, you guys, you would not even you would not even know. I know my body puts on muscle pretty easily. When I've weight trained in the past and, and done a lot of yoga in the past, I've noticed that I get a shift pretty quickly in, in how strong I feel and especially in my upper body. I will, I will pack on some muscle pretty quick. So I'm interested to see how that goes this month if I kind of keep up doing a little bit more fitness. But my other main goal with this challenge, this experiment, is to see if I can finally fix my hormones. I've been feeling like the caffeine was a big deal for me to give up. That was really affecting my mood and how I was feeling and just feeling anxiety and being frazzled all the time. And that affects everything else, right? Your sleep, how, and then if your sleep's bad, you're not waking up with energy and so you're drinking more coffee and it's this vicious cycle all the time. And like I just discussed, it also affects your bathroom habits, right? You get, your body gets used to going to the bathroom right after you drink some coffee or like I would notice even in the afternoon if I had coffee, I would have to go to the bathroom a lot of times. And so it's just, I want to get to that really neutral place to see how I'm just doing without all the stimulants, without any alcohol, without any sugar, without any anything else, just on the foods that I know right now, nourish my body the best, they don't cause me any digestive problems, all that good stuff, and then I can decide, okay, what do I maybe wanna add back in? What is maybe an occasional thing that I can have, but I will be able to go off this baseline of how I feel I'll be able to get more in touch with my cycle, my hormones, all the things that just should be working on their own naturally, and then get to know who I really am without all this stuff. Okay, it's day six, and I'm kind of terrified, you guys. I noticed this morning, I'll put a picture up, my face looks like it's a little bit more broken out, and I'm so scared that it's the butter. I so don't wanna give up butter. Cause I could, I could just eat this delicious, perfect ground beef jerky that I've been making in my dehydrator with grass-fed butter. I've been eating a bunch of Kerrygold along with some of the other butter you saw in my fridge, just like the regular butter. But no, I really want to keep butter in, but it might be. So I'm thinking about on day eight, cutting out the butter for a week and seeing if that changes anything and I'll show you my psoriasis spot too. It was getting really good and then it kind of flared up again and so I'm scared that it's the butter. So I think I'm gonna try a week without it and then if things get better, I'll continue and we'll go from there. Maybe I can have ghee someday if butter doesn't work. I also feel super oh. tired and crabby today. Like it, was, it took everything I had not to buy a coffee today at the Starbucks here in the grocery store. I've been making it for Ben in the morning and just dumping it out whenever he leaves so I don't drink any. But I didn't really feel bad until today. Today's day six. You know, I thought I would have felt worse the first three days. I just feel this afternoon slump and it's...
Okay, we're closing in on the end of day seven on the lion diet, and I feel pretty good. Um, I guess compared to what I was expecting, things went better than, than what I thought they would. I did not have any headaches giving up coffee, I think because I had transitioned essentially off of caffeine anyway. Um, I, was, I was having some caffeine in the afternoons usually, but it was very little to none. So I didn't experience any headaches, any major withdrawal symptoms for the coffee part, which is good. I'm glad that that, that went that way, but I did still feel really tired a couple of days and I just had to rest a little bit. And that's kind of a bummer for me a little bit, but um, I think my energy is going to slowly get better. I was telling Ben that I'm actually kind of amazed because even a month ago, if you would have asked me to go a week without coffee, I would have laughed, you know, and said, uh, no, there's no way I could function. So I'm actually pretty proud that I've gone seven whole days without drinking any coffee or eating any sugar or anything like that. I do have my fears about butter. I've been eating a ton of butter this week. I've been essentially living on that beef jerky that I make with butter. And I'd say I've eaten maybe a pound and a half of butter. Is that about a stick a day? That's, well, maybe a little bit less than a stick a day. Is That's approximately where I'm at right now. And I feel like two things have happened. I feel like I have gained some weight. I feel a little bit bloated. And as far as my skin goes, I think my main psoriasis spot, there are still times when it kind of itches and flares up a little bit. And so I think it's starting tomorrow, I'm gonna cut out the butter and see if that helps, which is a big, <laughs> uh, oh well. Maybe I'm just one of those people that can literally only eat beef and that's it. I suppose I could try ghee and see if that makes a difference. But also, you know, the first time I did this diet, it was about 11 months and it did just take some time for my inflammation to go down. Like my skin was still kind of red and you're like, we just came back from the park a little while ago and it was pretty windy walking home and so my face feels a little bit windburned my eyes feel a little bit windburned but like you can tell there's a little bit of redness there like my ear is kind of red you know and that's typical for me um but I would say I feel like my skin is still a little bit broken out a little bit inflamed and so it's either the butter or it's just going to take time. So I'm going to try seven days without butter next here and see how that goes. And then I'll decide for the rest of the month what I'm going to keep in and keep out. So like obviously still lying though, meat, red meat, salt, bone broth. I haven't been drinking a lot of my bone broth. I've just been doing the hot water in the mornings, which, you know, it is, it's okay. I've been trying to get my electrolytes in with that hot water. Yeah, it's just boring. You know, there's not a whole lot to talk about as in terms of what I ate um, other than just how I'm feeling. And so I guess to summarize, the good points are I can slowly feel my energy coming back. I do notice a difference in my reaction level pretty significantly, actually, this week. I have quite a bit more of uh, like free space between, you know, perhaps an outburst from my child and me reacting to that. Like, I just feel like I have good control of my emotions. I did get upset once this week, but it was when I was really tired. And that's my biggest trigger is when I'm tired, I'm crappy. And it's very hard for me to um, tolerate a whole lot of stuff if I'm just feeling like I did not get enough sleep. And that's the other thing. I've had some vivid dreams, some vivid, intense dreams, some kind of like almost nightmares, but more just like very intense, dramatic dreams. And those dreams have been waking me up. 
and so um that's interesting too i almost feel like that's some sort of detox thing but i have no idea if that's the case or not anyway um overall i would say it's been a good week it went better than i expected in terms of cravings and missing any foods in particular i do miss coffee though i do miss it i do um wish that it, i was still including it but um Maybe I'll be able to add it back in. You never know. So, okay, it's getting dark. I will see you for another update next week. Bye.